memorable. The decisions I made, I didn't plan it, but each decision I made, from the Love Motel, to the Lighthouse, to Hell and Dead, Chicken and Beer, and then top it all off, this beautiful, quiet, serene beach, which I got to enjoy it highly. And each decision I made, I was rewarded. Don't you wish your life could be like that? That every decision you make, there's no regret, but there's reward. There's a sense of satisfaction, fulfillment. And I know some of us, we make decisions that we regret. And um, I was talking to Ben the other day. Uh, actually, yesterday we had lunch, and um, he was supposed to buy, but you know, he, he he said he left the wallet at home. He was dressed in his soccer uniform. Like, Pastor, uh, by the way, I left my wallet at home. I'm like, you planned this, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, you're wearing that uniform for you didn't really you didn't really play soccer, right? It's like I have no pockets. Anyway, we were talking, and he was asking me about midlife crisis. You know, I was like, have you ever, you know, did you ever go through a midlife crisis? I'm like, yeah, I did. And when I, when I, what happens is when you come to an age where, like, you know, you have lived half of your life, basically, that's, you know, meaning you're close to 40, is you begin to think about the things that you did and the things that you should have done or not have done. We have regrets. And one of, one of the regrets that I had was when I graduate, graduated from college, I was an interior design major. Yeah, I was very artsy. Yeah, I could just look at you up and tell, like, draw you. Like, no, 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 you did. Oh, yeah. Like, you need a little work. <laughs> you know, I'll give you a little bit bigger eyes, better nose. But I was, <laughs> I was just kidding. You know, and, yeah, I was very artsy, and I was, I could just design. I'd be like, oh, you want a house? I'll give you a house. I'd be like, oh, three stories. I told you guys about three houses. But I was so into God. And I wanted to do so much for God that I decided, I decided to go to seminary, okay? That was my plan. As soon as I graduate, I'm going to the seminary. I already applied. I was, I'm on my way there to the seminary. That was my decision. But then my, uh, my uncle, okay, he has a PhD. He has a lot of connections. He said, hey, Jen, I know you just graduated with a design major. I have a friend who has a design firm, and he's looking for somebody. Do you, do you want me to put in a good word in for you? You know? Basically, he's like, you know, I'm going to get you a job. I'm like, no. I, you know, deep inside, I knew I should have taken that job. Okay? But because of my stubbornness, and because of my plan, and because I thought it would have been more holy and better to go to seminary and do something for God, and I turned it down. It's one of the most, one of the things I really, really regret. And sometimes, even when we try to do something for God, if it's out of our own will, if, if it's out of our own desire, and it's not God's will, it's not what God wants for you, you shouldn't do it. When you look at the passage today, it says this. Therefore, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Okay? Don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. The Lord. It doesn't say Jesus. It doesn't say God. It says Lord, and it's there for a purpose. It's because he is, he is overall, he knows all, and he has a plan for our lives. You know, it doesn't matter how much we want to do for God. God doesn't need us. Did you guys know that? He can create, if he, if he wants to, he can create a pastor. You guys don't need me. I mean, you no, you need me. <laughs> God can bring a pastor from any, God can raise up a pastor from any one of you. 
or even a praise leader for that matter. We need you, man, but we don't need you in one sense. We need you, we thank God this. Anyways. <laughs> it depends on the Lord's will. He knows all. We make decisions without regard to what God wants, what the Lord wants. We, we make a mistake. Remember when Peter, Jesus was telling the uh, disciples, right? He's like, Guys, I taught you for three years, but guess what? I'm going to be betrayed, I'm going to be crucified, I'm going to be killed by the hands of men. Right? And what does Peter say? No, Lord, this will never happen to you. That seems logical. That seems good, right? He doesn't want his teacher to die. He doesn't want Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, to die on the cross and suffer. That seems right, but what does Jesus say to him? Get away from me, Satan. He calls him Satan. Did you know that we live in a time where we really need to seek God's will? What does he want? Do you know that, right? Look what he says. Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. What this means is we live in a fallen world and there are many things that's vying for our hearts and our attention and is trying to influence us away from God's plan, you see. And it could be even a good intention, like Peter. No, this may, this should never happen to you, Jesus. Or it could be like me. No, I want to serve God in seminary, and I want to do this for you. But that may not be God's will. Do you understand God's will? Do you know what He wants? Have you sought after what God wants for your life? Do you understand it? The word here, understand, it's not. It doesn't mean no. Okay. A lot of us, we think we know what God wants, okay? Oh, he wants us to go to church, and, you know, he wants us to do good things. The word here, understand, is to make two things to come together. It's like when the penny drops. You guys know what that means? The, the expression, the penny drops for you? It's like, you know, let's say I had a coin. Let's say this wallet represents a penny, right? I'm like, oh, my God. You come to a realization, an insight... So great that you just drop everything that's in your hand. Have you come to a place where you understand what God wants for your life? See? And when we do that, there's a reward at the end. There's a reward at the end of the tunnel. When we don't do that, there will be regret. Even when we have good intentions. Like I had, right? Right? So, we need to understand what the Lord's will is because we don't want to be influenced by ourselves, our heart, even our friends, even our pastors. Even our pastors, we don't want to be influenced to do something or in a direction that God doesn't have a plan for you. Let me give you an example about the pastor. Um... So I graduated, not in grad, I was in seminary, and our senior pastor in the church that I was going to heard that I was going to seminary. And he said, Jen, I want you to serve as our youth pastor, right? That seems logical. I'm going to seminary, which means I'm there to do some business with God. I'm, I'm there to do ministry. He was the pastor of the church that I grew up in. They needed a youth pastor. He knew me, I knew him. I'm, going, I'm being trained. He said, come serve as youth pastor. My heart said no. The Holy Spirit said no. But I said yes. Why? Because of his influence. Because of my relationship to him. He's a pastor, first of all. And he's a pastor of the church that I grew up. It kind of makes sense. Yeah, they need somebody. They, they have a need, right? They have a need there. I'm going to seminary. It just makes sense. God said no. One way that you know God's will is either if you have peace or you don't have peace in your heart about something. If you, if you don't have peace in your heart about something, you better go to prayer. You better start praying, okay? Because that's one indication that God is telling you, this is not my plan for you. It may be logical. It may seem good, right? But that's not God's will. And if you follow that path and you ignore what God is trying to tell you, guess what? That's foolish. Paul says, don't be foolish. 
understand what God, God's will is for your life? Do you do that? Do you seek to understand what God has in plan for you? That's the way you, if you do that, there's a reward. You may not understand it at the moment, but when you understand God's will and you go on that path, there's a reward at the end instead of regret. You know what happened as I was doing that youth ministry? Oh my. It broke me and it broke me again. I wasn't ready. First of all, I had broken up with my very first girlfriend. I was going through a lot of emotional things, right? Um, I wasn't trained properly. Nobody decided for me. And the kids were like, you guys ever seen Godfather? Well, they were the leaders. <laughs> okay. They would come to worship high, right? And like, and they just walk out during the sermon, they just get high and come back in. You can smell it. You know? And all the girls, they like that. <laughs> right? The youth girls are like, they like this gangster, that bad boy type. I was like, and I had to deal with that, right? It was so hard. It, it, it was, no one should go into ministry in that kind of setting unprepared emotionally, spiritually, in any way. That was the result, right? So Paul says, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. But what are we talking about here? We're talking about how to live wisely in an evil world. How to live wisely in an evil world. Don't neglect God. He loves you. He has a plan for you. Don't listen to people, even your parents, even, like I said, even maybe your pastor, anybody, put God first. His opinion, his plan comes first in your life. You see, we live in a world where there are things trying to influence and move us in different directions, even your parents. I know some of you, like, Man, get married. What's up? You're like, no chunya, no chunga, right? Start working out. We're getting too old. It's time for you to get married, you know? Your parents are pushing you, right? Let me tell you guys something. Last night, we just found out, I, I'm pretty sure my sister, he's, she's 31, she's never had a boyfriend in her life, right? And she, Facebook, I'm pretty sure this is not friendly gesture in the picture, right? She's going like this. And he's kind of kissing her on the head. That's not friends, right? So she found somebody. And for 31 years, okay? Now, and, and I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, her mom was telling her, get married, get married, get married, get married. You know, meet somebody, meet somebody. You know, I did that too when I was in Korea. I met a lot of girls. They were not worthy, let me tell you. Right? <laughs> when you listen to your parents, Meet somebody, you meet a lot of unworthy people. But my sister met um, 31 years, no boyfriend, right? And I could tell from what he, the guy, wrote that his personality is very similar to my sister. Because every other word that he, say, he says is about prayer and the Holy Spirit. And when you talk to my sister, it's like you're talking to God, like, Holy Spirit, prayer, every other word. Hey, did you pray? Can I pray for you? Oh, you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit be with you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my sister met somebody, her match. Right? And he's, he's actually pretty good looking, actually. I mean, my, 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 my wife was like, I should have waited. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't say that, boy. You should have waited. If you notice, if you go downstairs, she's all prettied up. Guess why? I was like, I was driving here today. I was like, honey. I'm not going to be a Ben Affleck, trust me. Because he kind of looks like Ben Affleck, the, the guy. He's like Spanish, Miranda is like, like his last name, my sister's. Don't listen to people's opinion. Wait for God and see what God has in plan for you. See God. That's the, that's the wise way. What is God's will for your life, in your situation, in the things that you're doing? Do you do that? Do you seek to understand what God wants in your life and through your life to 
understand that. Now, I can tell you one thing. It's through the Word of God is one way. The Word of God that you know, okay, what you should be doing and what you should not be doing in the path that you should be taking, okay? One way that I knew that I had to come here was also through the Word of God. And the Word of God that I got was Psalm 23, okay? And that's, the Lord is my shepherd, Yahweh roi, no exile. I shall not want. He leads me in pastures of green, he makes me lie down by still waters. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for behold, he's with me, right? His rod and his staff come me. And this word came to me while I was beginning to think, I had already applied to this church, and <clears throat> in my mind, I was going, to, I was like, man, why am I here? You know, why, why am I in Korea? Why am I traveling an hour and 45 minutes to go to work and back? I used to travel an hour and 45 minutes, public transit, and back every day. I used to come home like 11, 30, 12 at night, and I was, I was in the bus, and God, why, what am I doing here? And he gave me that word, you know, I'm your shepherd. I'm your shepherd, and I'm going to bring you to where there's green pasture. I love you. You're my sheep. I'm going to make you lie down by still waters. Don't fear. Okay? You may feel like you're in the valley of the shadow of death. Don't fear. And it's that word, God's promise, you know? And I connected that with this church. That's the place where God is leading me. That's the green pasture. That's the still waters. And you know, a lot of you guys don't know, but man, I went through a lot. You know, I went through a lot. And <clears throat> and I think God brought me here, not only to serve as pastor, but also to regain strength. I need green pasture. And literally, I have a green pasture in front of my balcony. If you guys went to my home, it's like, it's like a pasture. There's horses. And there's a little pond. I feel like, God, you got to get me there. You know, get me out of the balcony into there. But it's like private property and... I hear a lot of coyotes, so I'm not going to go there. <laughs> and I, we actually saw a coyote eat up like a nest. My, my, my wife was like, it's heartbroken. I ate the nest, eh? the coyotes ate the nest. No more birds. I'm like, thank God. They were like keeping me awake at night with the tripping. <laughs> but, yeah. It's the word of God that leads us to where we want. The word of God shows us God's plan for our lives. Another way God speaks to us to know God's will is through people. Okay? In one sense, sometimes people could be bad, bad influence and lead us away. But at another times, people could give us the words that God wants us to hear. Don't ignore the, the things that people say to you, especially criticism. You know, you need to learn to take criticism um, with a grain of salt. I have no idea what that means. Great or what is that? What is that? Called? Anyways, make it taste better. I don't know. Take it in a good way. I think that's what it means, right? Yeah, make it taste better. Tell me later, EJ. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> we need to learn to take criticism. It may be what God may be trying to tell you. This is my will for you. Um. My wife, um, one day, just asked me out of the blue, said, honey, how can we love each other better, right? And then, you know, I just kind of told her, kind of response, kind of, in a way that blew off. I didn't really, I wasn't really listening. What she was saying is, you know, I need your love. I need you to love me, okay? And if I was listening, I would have kind of understood that that's, that's what God was trying to say. Jen, I want you to love Ruth more. And God was speaking to me through her. And a lot of events happened when we five, you know, we were like going toe to toe. You know, Elijah's like, stop lying. I was like, no, wait, I'm going to teach my wife a lesson. Who's <laughs> show her who's the boss. Boom, a couple of jabs. I mean, not literally physically, right? Like verbal jabs. Uppercut, yeah, I won. In reality, I didn't win. She's my wife. I have to love her. And... But, you know, she's not perfect either. But, um, you know, in bed, God, you know, God just really moved in my heart. 
as I hug, as I hug her in bed, I just started weeping. I was like, man, I just, yeah, I wasn't loving her. I wasn't loving her as my old wife, my, my own body. The Bible says to love your wives as your own body, as your soul. I wasn't taking care of her, and I was like, at night, I was, you know, <clears throat> that's the only way I can apologize to my wife. At night, when she's sleeping, honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was weeping, honey, I'm sorry. And she's like, what? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> she heard. She heard everything. She, pre- she was pretending like she was asleep, but she heard, you know. God speaks to us through people, you see, and through God's a word. And through the Holy Spirit, as I said, we need to understand what the Lord's will is. If we want to live a, a, a life that is wise and not unwise. And lastly, it says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Have you guys ever been filled with the Holy Spirit? Why, why is Paul here comparing being filled with the Spirit? being drunk. You ever, you ever think about that? Well, why is he comparing? Being drunk and being filled with the Holy Spirit. There are many different theories here. One theory is that, you know, in the ancient church, they actually drank during service. You know, the Lord's communion, the communion that we have today with the little, what do you call those things? <laughs> and the, the, the bread, right? The, back then it was like that. It was just literally bread, like the pitas. They pass it around. They had actually wine. And what they did was they just drank up. A lot of churches, we were just having a party at church. We're like, hey, the Lord is good. Praise the Lord, right? We're not getting drunk, right? And so that's, that's one reason or one theory is why it's being compared with the Holy Spirit. You know, Paul is saying in service, don't get too caught up on other things, other entertainment, rather than on the Lord. And I think there's something to be learned here. A lot of us become the church, and it's, we lose the focus on the Lord in being filled with his spirit. Rather we focus on whether it was entertaining, whether the sermon was good, I was blessed. Some of you guys who are single, just checking out. Oh, then, 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 right? Coming to check out, right? Any cute guys, any cute girls? I know when I was in Korea, you know, the reason why I went to Korea, never mind, I'm not gonna go there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say that for another day, right? And yeah, when we come, we lose focus on God. The the purpose, we lose the, the purpose of why we come, is that we want to be filled with God's spirit. Can you go to the next verse? And how do we do that? We worship. In spirit and in truth, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. You know, he's talking about just praising God together. You know, there's something when we worship God together. Did you guys know that? Jesus said, when two or more are gathered in my name, there I am with them. You see? Don't lose the focus why we're here. Okay? We gather to worship God, to be filled with His His Spirit, which truly satisfies, okay? Not wine. And then, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. From your heart. It has to come from your heart. You know, worship, your relationship with God, it's a heart thing. It's not a mouth. It's not a mouth thing. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter if you sing a thousand songs with your mouth or what you think in your mind. It's your heart. Where's your heart when you come to church, right? Where's your heart? Is it singing? Is it making music? Is it is it singing to the Lord? 
Is it to the Lord, right? From your heart. Not caring about what people say or think. From your heart. And as we do that, and as we worship God from our heart and connect to God, He fills us with His Spirit. And always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One sign that, that we're being filled with God's Spirit and we have God full in us is when we're content with the things that God has given us and we, we're thankful. And, you know, when I uh, prepare sermons, I'm so stressed, right? Because I want to do a good job so you guys can grow in, in faith, and you guys can grow in faith in God, and come to know His love and stuff like that. It's a, very, it's a tremendous responsibility, by the way. And so there's a lot of pressure, and then God always reminds me. And I pray, God, thank you. We're here for God, aren't we? It's for God. And I just thank God for the opportunity to be able to stand here. You know, they look you in the eyes and tell all the junk. And you guys sit here and you know, listen and go through it. Like, thank you for those fools who come and listen to me every week, right? <laughs> now that if you're going to come back. Thank you, right? They endure. <clears throat> you know what the wine represents? It's not just being drunk, and it represents anything else that we want. We want more than God. That's what it represents. It represents those things that has our hearts other than God. And Paul says. If you want to be wise, that is not the wise thing. To rely on anything else, to give your heart to anything else, to love anything else than God and being filled with His Spirit, which truly satisfies, which truly rewards. You see? And so, Paul says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with His Spirit. With His Spirit, with God. Love God. Get to know God. If, how many of you guys would say, I've been filled with the Spirit of God? Anybody? Yeah, good. And you know what it is like. It's almost like being drunk. What happens when you're drunk? You lose your inhibitions, you know? Hey, and you become who you really are, right? So if you want to find out who a person is really like, take a drink, yeah. <laughs> right? Everything comes out, right? Everything comes out. The truth comes out. You lose your inhibition, why? And you become who you are. You, you, you just become, your, you become all of a sudden this bold, person. You don't care what people think. You just lose it, right? For the wrong reasons, because you have alcohol working in your body, right? Your brain cells, your alcohol has your brain cells like this. I'm like, don't think. <laughs> just do, right? And you regret a lot of things. But you know what? Similar when God comes into our hearts and He fills us. Okay? You don't care what people think. And you don't care about what's going on because you know, you know that God is with you. And you know that He loves you. And you know that you're in the right place. So, you want to live a life where there's reward at the end and not regret. Seek to understand what God wants for you. And seek God first before other things. Let Him fill you. Not video games. 
not a boy or a girl, not race or any other thing. <coughs> Let God be your all in all. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we live in a time where there's so many, so many influences, God, that, that come our way. Um, they're, they want to capture our hearts, and, and God, most of those influences want to draw us away from you. But Lord, we know that you love us, and that your way is the best way. So God, help us to be wise, and to know your will, and follow your will, and to love you more than anything else in this world. Help us to be filled with your spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray.